I'm going to steal a line from Candy. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. All right. <laughs> we're small, but we didn't, we're bold. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the lesson you gave me today, Lord. I pray that it touches each and every heart and soul out there. And Lord, I just ask that you be with everybody that's unable to be here today, Lord. Whether they're traveling, homesick, or whatever, just Lord, just look out for them. Ask God in Jesus' name, amen. We need to keep Marie Payne in prayer. Some of her grandbabies are real sick. Uh, a couple of them's got strep throat. Uh, one of them's got the flu. Marie herself ain't feeling good. And Ed is, he's at home, but he's not doing good. So we need to keep them all in prayers. And if you have your Bibles, open it up to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we'll start with the first verse. It says, This Know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And I think we're there now. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boisterous, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. And Lord, is that ever true, what's going on now? I mean, you can't turn on the news without hearing some of this. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good. And you see the despisers of those that are good every time you get on social media. Or even when you turn on the news. Um, some of the shows they had the day for these kids to watch. When I was growing up, it was never even heard of. <coughs> and now they're doing it like, oh, it's no problem. Yeah. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. You see that all the time now. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turned away. And they have. This whole world has just turned away from us, from God. With all this mess going on, um, even the commercials are starting to get sickening. I mean, when, when mom was alive, me and her used to love to watch the commercials because they were so funny. Now they're disgusting. So, and well, what they're doing in our public schools too. Um, I saw a little cartoon clip. Two two, you saw two of the kids in the classroom, the teacher writing on the board, and one of them says, "Well, I thought we was going to learn about division today." And the teacher says, "Yeah, we are." And she's writing that that uh, what what was that separation thing they're talking about? Racial racial <coughs> critical race theory. Critical race theory. Yeah. It's ridiculous. God ain't looking at you for your skin color. He's looking at your heart. And this whole world has gone upside down over skin color. For uh, of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with Divers lust. You, you see that all the time. You don't even have to go to sit down in front of the TV and watch that. Just go to the mall, sit down and watch it. It's happening there right in front of God and everybody. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They refuse to hear the truth. I got into it with one person in Georgia because she did not want to hear the truth. And it, it, it's sick. It, it, it's, it's a sick, sick, sick situation that we're in there now. But 
Here it is in the Bible, telling us it's going to be that way. And this was written over 2,000 years ago. And what they're saying right here is happening right now. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Yeah, men of corrupt minds is all of them up there in Washington, D.C. Including our governor and, 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 and that Dr. Fauci. Yes. Uh, my daughter told me that a friend of hers um, went and took the COVID shot and now she's at home sick as a dog from the shot. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as there also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. We know Jesus' doctrine and his manner of life and purpose and faith and long-suffering, charity and patience. That is God right there. It's what he wants to give us. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Larista, what persecutions I endured. But out of all of them, but out of them, all the Lord delivered me. Timothy here was being persecuted no matter where he went. Just like a lot of us today, as ministers and deacons and, and Christians, period, we are being persecuted for our beliefs. The whole world does not want to believe in God anymore. They turned their back on him, and look what happened to our country. Yea, and I'm Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecutions. And that's what us Christians are doing now. We're suffering the persecutions of the world. I mean, you can't turn on TV or the radio without hearing or seeing something disgusting. Uh, on television, women talking about their body parts. I mean, that is supposed to be for the women alone in the privacy of their own home. And they wonder how come there's no, so many sexual assaults. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being, being deceived. And that is happening too. You can go out here on the streets and see all that. There was a young man, I found this out through a friend of my daughter's. This officer pulled him over for speeding and when he walked up to the car, the guy shot him in the face and then ran. Well, he got picked up by the Cab County, Georgia police for it. Good for them. But Facebook had them all on there like he's a hero. Yeah. I'll probably get banned from Facebook for saying this, but y'all are jerks. Because the guy who showed that there was going on there, he said, it's okay to show these guys shooting cops and, and beating them with clubs and whatever else they want to do to a cop. But let them show a kid on Facebook with a Nerf gun and it's Katie bar the door. They don't want to, they don't want to hear or see any of that. Uh, this world is getting turned upside down. But continue though in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. We gotta learn from all of this. 
we got to learn that this is not what God had in store for us. We know where we're going. We have loved ones there waiting on us. So we got to learn from what is happening. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ, uh, Christ Jesus. When you saved, first saved, you're like a little child. You're born again. And you're raised with the scriptures. And the more you read it, the more you learn. You can read it over and over and over again from cover to cover. And every time you're going to get something new out of it that God wanted you to read. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God didn't put it pen to paper. He dictated it to all the people in the Bible that wrote it. Moses, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Peter, all of them. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, in instruction, in righteousness. It is our guidepost. We learn from it. It's like mom and dad teaching you. Don't touch the stove, it'll burn you. Type thing. But God will take you by the hand and walk you through your life. If you would let him, he will not forsake you. You might think he did. I mean, so many people, especially at funerals, and Dr. Cash, you've seen this too. How come God let this happen? You Sometimes it's just their time to come home. We get doctors that we think will do, are doing miracles at healing people. Actually, we've seen it here in this church. It's prayer that healed these people. Brother Nick, thank God, on the exact day that would that exactly six months, he was released from rehab. And from what I understand, he's going to be here today. And knowing him, it's going to take a herd of stallions to keep him from coming. But we've seen the healing that God does. We've had people here with tumors that got prayed over and when they went back to the doctor, the doctor couldn't find them. We've had people here sick with COVID. We prayed over them and the COVID disappeared. We had people sick with the flu. We prayed for them and it's gone. God is the best medicine. Although man will come up with some stuff to make you feel good. I mean, just in a few days, marijuana is going to be legal. But there, you got to be careful because they got catches to that now. You can only do this and do that and have this and have that. And it's like a big, it's like if you, Get it and do it. You got to be very careful, otherwise you're going to hang yourself. So they started up something that I, I think they shouldn't have never done. Although, if to quote the hippies of the 60s, man, it's an herb. <laughs> That's what they used to call it, an herb. That's how they used to try to get around the law. Man, it's an herb, just like uh, p parsley. <laughs> yeah, well, no thank you. I, I'll admit, as a teenager, I tried it. I've done it before. No. I, I'm 62 years old. I don't need it no more. The man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished 
into all good works. Once you're saved, you, God wants you to do good works for him. And to know what good works he's doing, you let God control it. I, yeah, you can write it out on a piece of paper, but if you don't hand it out to God, it's going to fail. But if you write it out on a piece of paper and hand it to God, it's going to come about. Maybe not right away, because this, in this world, everybody's instantaneous. Just that quick. They want that just that quick. God don't work that way. God's got his time at doing everything. And we have to wait for him. Ms. Cash used to call him the 1159 God. Because he'll get you at the last minute. But we got to pray for this world. We got to pray for the people on TV that, that's showing off their bodies. I, they have a big thing on the news the other day in Bedford County where the school board had a meeting and all these parents, and I don't blame them one bit, were in there yelling and screaming that this new ruling of letting boys in the girls' locker room is wrong. Well, it is. I mean, me and Alan was talking about this the other day. What does a six-year-old know about six sexuality? What do they know about gender and all like that? All they know is, I'm a, I was born a boy. I'm a boy. I'm a girl. What's this about transgender at an age six years old? That's just stuff that the parents are putting in the kid's head and, and letting them watch some of these disgusting shows on TV that produce that. They've even had transgenders reading stories to three and four years old. Cross-dressers dressed up like women to, to read to them. And they're making them believe that this is a normal lifestyle. But according to God's word, it is not. It is not a normal lifestyle. Even the Levitical law states that man shall not lay down his mankind as he does with woman. It is abomination before God. And they're teaching their children to do that. As Dr. Cash would say from the pulpit, they're raising a bunch of heathens. It's true. But we got to get those kids now. Thank God our Wednesday night has more children in it than it does adults. Because these kids are learning what God is all about. And I do pray that they not want to leave here and they go home and talk to their other friends that wasn't there, they're telling them about what's going on. It had to be to have 30 some odd kids here Wednesday night, they had to be spreading the word. And thank God for that. In our own little corner of the world right here, we're trying to spread the word and it's getting out there. And Hollywood has just gone crazy with everything. Thank God there's still shows like The Rifleman on and Star Trek. But these days with the shows they have on, it's sickening. A lot of times not even worth turning on your TV. I find some movies and watch them. Don't I, Kayla? Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Hit, saw this flat. <laughs> But we got to watch what we do, watch what we say, and by all means, follow, follow God lesson plan at raising your children. You ain't got to beat them half to death to teach them something. Raise them 
in a good, godly home, teaching them right from wrong from the Bible. Let them know that if you're born a boy, you're a boy. There ain't no gene in your body that says you, uh, it, it made a mistake and made you come out as a boy when you're actually a girl. Am I right, Yvonne? There's no gene that does that. But now the doctors come up with a gene that says, oh, well, with that gene, he's going to be a, boy, a girl. Or he's supposed to be a girl. I saw that one, uh, one episode of Law and Order. I'm like, oh, good Lord. But we need to follow God's word and listen to what God wants us to do. We need to turn this world back around from the, from the path that it's on now. It's on the path of destruction. Although, the Bible says it's going to happen. But that doesn't stop us from praying and trying to stop it. Because we got God on our side to do so. Let us pray.